All right, so this one here is a 2008, I believe, Chrysler 300. And with the machine hooked up, you can see I'm dealing with a air conditioning issue. So I got a, uh, I got a letter from the, from the customer about stuff that was done. Um, he said that it would be low on charge. I don't know why he knows any of this stuff. And then someone put the, uh, the pressure uh, sensor in and the, they know that the compressor runs but there's no voltage going to it so that's what he said so I'm kind of going to go in blind here and just start from the beginning so um, I had already pulled out like maybe 0.18 pounds it holds 1.6 three or something like that so I know it was low so I got to start from the beginning and put a full charge in it um, but while I was just thinking because I had a I don't know if it was a Durango or turn the key on here I don't know if it was a Durango or something but it really kicked my butt with a pressure transducer it had and it was not the pressure switch and it was really expensive and it made me nervous to make the call because I didn't have this tool at the time. Um, let me get to where I was at. All right, a little bit less background noise, but it does not have, it's not really an automatic air system. So when I went into, you know, I'm in the engine right now. When I went into, um, the HVAC, I won't bore you through it, but it said no communication, so it does not have automatic HVAC, but on the, the uh, wiring diagrams, the engine computer is in the middle of this, and it's turning the relay on, so dropping my scan tool. Come on, man. Say that again. Three hours. What are you saying? Freaking video. I'm not. That's not three hours. Like your tool review. I'm Dude, not. I fell asleep in yeah. five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna drag it out, Nick. I know. All right. So anyway, on the engine. Wait, under wait, wait. Data. You're gonna show pink. I'm not there yet. What? The pink. Oh yeah. There's the coolant manifold leaking, running coolant all over the place too. And this guy. Can you see that? Ooh. Ooh, the U right there, Uber driver. So he needs his air conditioning working. So anyway, why is my light there? Oh, here we go. So under engine, under accessories, I was able to see because the computer controlled the air conditioning. I was able to see the AC select switch, request switch, and then. Uh, you know the high side pressure which you know I actually pulled it under a vacuum and then I don't know I think my machine leaked a little bit or something I've been having trouble with my machine so anyway so you can see I can see a voltage on my pressure switch and all that stuff so let's see if I pull this under a quick vacuum here real quick it kind of When I had this under a vacuum at first, I don't know if it confused the uh, the sensor, but it pulled my voltage. You saw it was at like 10 or something. It pulled it down, and all of a sudden, when it went into a vacuum, I'm saying, "Oh man, high side pressures at 438 pounds. No wonder it's not kicking the air on." So glad I caught that on there because I wasn't quite sure, you know if it had the transducer or just the pressure sensor just from past history so anyway so i saw that first so i don't need to really pull this under a huge vacuum i already did so i will 
hold it. I will reset. Charge at one six five. Enter. Got my tanks on. Got my low side open, high side closed. I like to do that because I can add a little bit of dye oil, which I already did, and then charge it and blow that oil through the low side. So hit charge. It's going to do it automatically, and then you can see when it starts charging. This is what I saw. Then it dropped to zero. I'm like, oh, cool, it works. And then you can see my pressure start going up, my voltage changing. So at this point, I'm pretty confident I do not have a pressure switch problem, a pressure sensor problem. So that's working. So when it's done, I'll turn that off to get rid of the noise and show you where I went. Alright, so I went to the wiring diagram just to see what kicked it on and I just used the manual. Actually the automatic was pretty darn close to the same thing but you can see the compressor clutch right there. The dark blue yellow wire going over to number one and dark blue yellow straight up into the power integrated power module, whatever they call it. So, and you can see that that goes into the AC control out, and then there's a AC con a clutch control, which goes from the PCM. So the computer is the one giving it the okay to turn on, and then you have the on coolant temperature sensor which I was thinking about because of that coolant leak and you have the and it is a pressure transducer so um, anyway we confirmed that that kind of works um, so that goes in but that's all being controlled by this it just says electronic so it's kind of built in um, there's three relays in there and none of them are the AC relays so it must be a solid state relay built into that control module and then I think that's all I really looked at so sorry I got sidetracked there so I'm not sure where I left off um, <clears throat> but what I'm going to be chasing initially is my AC clutch control and my the input and then the clutch control, the output to the clutch itself. <clears throat> Assuming that it doesn't kick on with the full charge. So, what I did here, just sit in the car. So what I did here is I just wanted to go back to my, my scanner and you can see I have like 90 pounds of pressure in the high side. You can see the voltage, you can see my AC switch is request and select switch is off. And if I go turn on, turn the thing on, and hit a blend so it's not gonna turn it on automatically. You can see I'm still off and then I'm gonna hit my button here, see what happens. I turn it on, and you can see <clears throat> that the select switch is on, the request is on. Um, nothing's changing with the high side because it's not kicking on, and then it's saying the actual AC clutch relay is on. So, from the wiring diagram, there is no relay that I can, you know, physical relay that I can check. I can only check the input and the output. But since I'm seeing the request, you know, the select switch and the request must be, you know, the computer telling that integrated module to turn it on and then thinking it's turning the relay on, that's where we're at. So when I went back out to the totally integrated power control module.
that is out here. And there's not a whole lot in this one because it's your basic 2.7 liter V6 300. I'm sure some cars with fancier stuff would have more stuff, but there is no AC relay, it's all built in. So the next step was to pull the actual module out. I'll flip it over because I want to see some wires here. So I'll get set up. Okay, so I printed out the body control module circuit, which leads me to the integrated power control module because there are a lot of connectors under here. So I found the, uh, the 20 pin and there's a 14 goes to you know, another 14. Another 26, and that one's 26, so there's two of 26, and they, the wires I'm looking for go to different connectors, so the AC clutch control output is a dark blue yellow, and it was on a 26 pin connector, and the only two that are 26 were this one and this one, so I found the wire I'm looking for. It is a, like a yellow blue, I think. Dark blue yellow. Check its light out. Got this from Snap On. I think it's my favorite light. It like flips over. It's thin like that, but it flips over into a regular flashlight. For the, I think the head says it. No, it doesn't. Either way. Just a regular flashlight, but then if you flip it open, it's like a big LED wand and it's a magnet. And it's awesome. It's the best thing I've bought in a while. It's just really nice. It's easy to you know, slide down into tight places. So if your snap on guy has these on promo, he said they're back ordered. I might get another one just because. Anyway, so I'm back probed into the 126 pin connector and I found my dark blue yellow wire and I back probed it. And so what I have here is I have my test light right here and this is hooked up to the lug on this positive terminal feed right here so if I touch any ground it's gonna light up right so if I take the wire it's supposed to go to my AC compressor hook it up to my test light it worked I dropped it but it worked so I know I have a, a good ground and whether it's short of the ground or not I don't know so I really should have a fuse here to do what I'm about to do, but I usually just, just touch. And you can hear the AC compressor is kicking on. So, if it was a direct short to ground, this thing would be arcing heavy, and I could fry a lot of stuff. But So, if you're going to do this at home, use a fuse jumper wire, just in case. Man, that sounds like mad. Okay, well it works. Hey, the fans kick on. My pressures are dropping. Man, that compressor sounds terrible. All right, so at least we know the compressor works. Pulled me down to about 45, my high side. I can't read it from here, but it looks close to the 200-ish. So. so the AC compressor works. I know it's not that leg, so the next leg I was looking for was to see the computer control, which is the AC clutch control, light blue orange, and that's in a different connector, so after a little bit of wire tracing and seeing which wires go where, because they could not find the 
actual connector identification in my Mitchell program. I'm not saying it's not there, but I found this light blue orange right there, which is the light blue orange I'm looking for. <clears throat> so I went to go back probe that, and when I did, I can find my other key. So I went to back probe this, and when I went to touch the wire, it broke, and it broke deep. So I'm gonna have to see if I can make something there. So, just so I know whether or not my computer still tries to control the air conditioning compressor, I'm gonna strip that back, maybe. Find my non-snap-on wire strippers. Actually, there's the snap-on wire strippers, but this is the hillbilly wire stripper. So, you just throw it in there anyway. Heat that up. Burn your fingers a little bit. Stretch that out. Here's my wire. So, I'm gonna hook my alligator clip. Make sure the other end's not touching anything bad. I'm gonna hook my alligator clip up to this. And I don't know what the computer's sending, so probably a ground, so I'm still hooked up to power. If I touch this, which I doesn't reach. So, I'm fused at least kind of through that bulb, so if I touch it, it lights up. So the computer is controlling the ground. So I'll leave my I'm gonna leave my camera hooked up. There's lit up. I'm gonna go press the AC button and that should turn off. So I turned the AC request button off and it turned off. So that's my computer control. So hopefully there's nothing more corroded deep in there. I'm going to unplug that connector and see if I can make something or find an end that will fit in there and solder it in place or whatever. And I can make this crappy air conditioner work. So I was able to get this little lock piece out of here. See if I can get the terminal out. And then I'll see if I actually have one that works. From my plethora of used engine harnesses. Can't get in there. There's like nothing left. Nothing left of that connected. There it is. Got my Sears $15 propane, not propane, whatever that gas is, soldering iron. Found the right connector in my
box of stuff. Let that cool down a little bit, heat shrink it. It's already in the connector. Too hot, I can slide slide my heat shrink back down over it. My hillbilly heat gun. So now I should be able to turn the air on and hear that crappy air compressor without jumping anything. Okay, so moment of truth. We should actually be able to hear that ugly compressor from here if I turn it on oh. I hear it running I see it just flying down a little bit Man, the pressures look terrible. Yeah, it's equalizing out. Pulling it down to 40, hanging to 200, probably about 85 degrees. I have the hood open, so I might be getting some less airflow. The high side is 200, that's not bad. 40, actually, it's not bad. What's up, Joe? Yeah, that can go. Ah, oh. I don't know if you can tell by my ah, uh, but it's cold. So it works. See how long the compressor lasts. But we can call this one fixed, guys. Thanks to a broken wire over there. Thanks for watching.